A student athlete is hoping to score big for herself and her teammates at St. John Paul, the second Catholic high school. Last season, the Guardians won the Taps Division III state title for the first time in program history. Junior forward Emily Rompel is a tremendous soccer player and is now on the verge of 100 career goals. She's currently at 93 and only averages about 40 minutes per game, but she's humble and surrounded by great coaches and awesome teammates. As Lyra Ramirez reports, Emily Rompel was born to score goals. I like winning and scoring. <laughs> I love scoring. <laughs> And that she does. Emily Rompel is a natural born scorer. The junior forward is closing in on 100 career goals. It, it is pretty rare, it's pretty rare. She scored 30 goals as a freshman. Last year she scored 36. Uh, my estimate is that she scores somewhere close to 40 or 45 goals this year when all said and done. Rompel is quick to credit her St. John Paul II teammates for her incredible success on the pitch. Um, they mean a lot to me. They're a great group of girls and we were always there for each other. We love each other. <laughs> we call each other um, family. <laughs> and uh, I've made some great friendships on this team, for sure. She gives all the credit to the teammates who set her up and put her in good positions. For a kid to be doing what she's doing, she is incredibly humble. Down to earth is just one of the many reasons her JP2 teammates respect and admire her. Uh, she's an amazing player. She is very confident on the ball, and she's very calm. So she's definitely a... She's a calming factor um, at, on the team, and she's she's amazing. Talk about amazing. Rompel can score with her dominant right foot, her left foot, with headers, long range, short range, you name it, and she makes it look easy. She makes the game look effortlessly. You know, you, you see her and you, you think that she's not moving very quick, and then all of a sudden she's past the player and the ball is in the back of the net. Yeah, I've been told I have like a calm presence when playing. Exactly, confident and cool, collected. She's got it all. <laughs> you just see her and you watch her play and you know it's special. Rompel is currently at 93 career goals and counting. Seven more to go. The wait is on. The goal is 100 by the end of the year. Okay. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> definitely exciting. I'm already excited for it and I know it's going to happen this year. I have faith in her that she's going to break the 100 goal record this year. And when she does reach the century mark, Emily Rompel is ready to celebrate with her John Paul II coaches and teammates. Some kind of food. Okay. Chick-fil-A, pizza party for the team. It's okay, so obviously Something your exciting. choice though, right? Yeah. <laughs> That was Larry Ramirez reporting. JP has two regular season games left and then the playoffs. Of course, we wish Emily Rompel the best as she chases 100 goals and the Guardians the best as they go for back-to-back -back state titles. Kind of feeling like we need only to work out a little bit to catch up with her. I know. She's good on all sides. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Feel. Maybe Mike and Fiona can hook us up. <laughs> 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 yes. No, no, no. It's time to simmer down. Because it's National Soup Month. <laughs> yes, indeed, and we are simmering a soup. I got this recipe from my mother-in-law. It is great, um, very cheap. It's going to feed a ton of folks, too. Very hearty, and take some diced onion, diced uh, green pepper. The little trick, and I've learned this from some of our guests, to do a green pepper, you know how it has seeds in it? Cut right along where the indentions are, and then just peel those little hunks off like that, and you're going to be left over with the seed right in the middle, Which and then just perfect. dice that up. Maybe a couple little leftovers there and toss that out. Yes, right. and also always do it from when you're cutting it from that side. It can sometimes be tough to cut through the uh, skin of a green pepper, but we're gonna do that. Show you this uh, soup recipe, very simple to do. And like I said, great on a cold day. Yes, and Jen is learning another trick there. Yes, yes, I think it's soup. Pendus that you're doing a soup, and so are we over here at the Culinary Cottage. Nicole Flowers has a tip because we're doing a tomato soup with a twist, and you have a great tip to roast the tomatoes, right? Yes, so for this soup, we use the most inexpensive tomato that you can find. These are Romas, um, and we they should not even be ripe. You can use whatever stage they're at at the store, slow roast them, and they'll have an incredible depth of flavor. Ooh, I'm excited to try that. Back to you guys. <laughs> oh, yes. Whoa, what, what, oh, look at that. You're so close. Come on, try it again. Shoot. Oh, Adina Anderson is here to show you some super decorations. 
for the biggest game of the year. <laughs> yes, indeed, as well as some cocktails for that, too, because you got to have both going on there. Also, you know, a lot of athletes mm -hmm. get really kind of superstitious. Uh, Sparky Anderson, the old coach, manager of the Tigers, would never step on the foul lines during a game. Do you have any lucky little things that you do? Yes, to bring luck to your team, let us know at SA Live Case Out on Facebook and Twitter, and we'll share some of those lucky charms during the show in just a few minutes. Okay. Well, now let's look at the forecast. We'll be up around 59 degrees this afternoon. We're sitting at 53 right now, so a cool, mild day. A little bit warmer tomorrow, more cloud cover, especially tomorrow night into Saturday morning. A couple of areas of maybe drizzle, some fog Saturday morning. Otherwise, it clears during the afternoon. It's pretty nice weather from there on out with temperatures in the 70s, both Saturday and Sunday, guys. Thank you, Justin. I am so excited about this essay live. Yeah. Because they're talking my language here. <laughs> what, soup? Soup. <laughs> It's a good it's a good day for it. <laughs> that's all of our show for now. For all of us here at KSA 12, we thank you for joining us. SA Live starts right now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from Historic Market Square. This is SA Live. And it's oh <laughs> Did that one hit the crossbar? <laughs> hey, we have flying bears on the show. Uh -huh. I mean, they're little tiny bear cookies. But you know what? When Nadine <laughs> Anderson is here, it is a touchdown anyway. Hello, happy Thursday, everybody. I'm Mike Osterhage, <sighs> and it is National Soup Month. Love yes, that. and I'm Fiona Gorstiza. Well, the San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo will be starting in just a couple of weeks, but you know what? They need your help. Yeah, of course, seats are going to be spread out this year. Uh, the Rodeo is asking San Antonio to fill up the seats at the Freeman Coliseum by doing retro rodeo fan cutouts. Contributions go to the scholarship fund and you can reserve a seat for your cutout at sarodeo.com backslash shop. What a fun thing to do. Yes, just a little over a week away, of course. On Sunday, February 7th, the Kansas City Chiefs will play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the big game. Are you cheering for any particular team? No. Like, I really, I, I don't have any affiliation to either. Not a Tom Brady fan? Okay, I'll roll for Brady. <laughs> <laughs> like many leagues out there. Well, it's the, you know, the, the goat, as they call him, the mm -hmm. greatest of all time versus the, the young kids from uh, Mahomes from uh, KC. So it's going to be a good game. And, of course, I'm sure somebody has the, their lucky charms. I know Brady, not just for luck, but has the same shoulder pads from college. You know, that may be one of his lucky things. Some folks wear the same T-shirt. Some folks right. wear the same socks or put them on differently or right. something like that. Or, or they have a, you know, a ritual or an activity that they do, you know, where they maybe lay out jerseys, you know, or, or something that day. So what is it that you do to bring luck to your team? Let us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter. And if your partner, you know, maybe does something, maybe you can just go ahead and sell them out right now and tell us what they do. <laughs> All right, well, big game. Uh, you know, it's a lot of excitement, but it also means a lot of wonderful food and got to have something to wash down that food as well. So we got some cocktails and none other than Adina Anderson is here. Yes, with Creative Lifestyles with Adina, of course, here to show us some DIY big game decorating ideas and eats. Mm -hmm. Yes, yum, I need my football right? apron on here. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Get you seen you're going to be doing the, the mixing over here with the food. Okay. But you're doing the mixing over there with the cocktails. <laughs> All right, get Look started with the drinks. <laughs> I don't know how that happened, Mike. <laughs> I know, I thought oh, maybe geez. you were a bartender in your past life. Look how nice your slices look with your oranges. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> yes, mean orange slicer. <laughs> right? <laughs> so okay. I have two yummy cocktails to get ready for the big game or to have during the big game. And your first one you have there is your pig skin Bloody Mary. And so you want to use about a shot of the Enchanted Rock Vodka. Okay. You know, I'm kind of a Michigan pour, so it's, you know, one, two, three, four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Happy pour, okay. And then your favorite tomato juice. I like V8 or the Kamado, whatever you want to put in there. And then, of course, you got to have your Worcestershire. Shire. <laughs> I know. Easy for you to say. This can say, right? It's harder to say on a colder day. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> and then for your pig skin, we have some pork rinds that you can crush some up inside there. Or you can just garnish the drink with Interesting that. Interesting little combination. I know. So you can or crush just, them? 
You can if you want, or you can just put one on there. It kind of gives it that little salty oh, texture to it. Okay, hold so on. I'm what a texture girl. I like bacon and all kinds of stuff like, in my Bloody Mary. Dip the skin in and eat it. <laughs> yes, you could do that too. You yes, could. Indeed. Yeah, it's almost like a soup, right? I'm going to do both, Mike. Okay. <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. And while you're going to do the second cocktail, we're going to get Mike started on this yummy cheese ball here. Yeah, so we started off with some cream cheese, and the hint is we tried to soften this actually earlier, but <laughs> it's a little cold out here, so the cream cheese is a little stiff. But yeah. Uh, but it's a really simple, it's like a three or four little ingredient. You just take a, a thing of cream cheese, that, what is it, the big eight ounce or however much it is. Yeah. And then you put a ranch dressing in there, a package of that. Put some chives in there. Okay. And then some bacon. Because <laughs> you got to have bacon with everything, right? And this Ooh, is crushed up bacon. I can use bacon. some bacon. Put, yeah. I'm going to throw <laughs> it into this Bloody <laughs> like Mary. Give a piece of that. There you go. And it's good bacon. Thank there you. you. Go. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And then while he's <laughs> while you're mixing that up, Fiona, your next cocktail is kind of a take on an Arnold Palmer. So this is a bourbon blended whiskey. The Texas Ranger here locally in, in San Antonio is absolutely my favorite. And then so you're going to put about a shot of that and then put some iced tea, your favorite iced tea some lemonade, a little bit of mint, which you can muddle some mint in there or just put a sprig in there, okay. and an orange slice. See how easy that is? Oh, look <laughs> at that. Hold on, we got the I orange slice. But that reminded me of a Long Island iced tea a for little a bit. second. Yes, yeah. yes. Even though that's the, the, the clear liquors and that's the... Exactly, <laughs> yeah. I think you use a little bit of soda with that, but I like the mint sprig. It just adds a little bit of mm -hmm. flavor. Now on the outside rim, you could also put a little bit of the sugar, which for your favorite team, I think both teams we have this year in the big game, are their colors are red, so I grabbed the red. <laughs> I don't have a dog in this game, so, you know. <laughs> You're like me. Yeah. Yes. Lions <laughs> next year, right? It. We'll, we'll, the we'll Bears. Be <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot. You're a Bears fan. Anyway. All right. So, once, if this was a little bit softer, uh, it would form up into the shape of a football yeah, right the there with pretzels. Yeah, and the easiest way, one tip I have, is once you get it mixed up, instead of getting your hands all messy, because I hate touching things like that, put it inside a Ziploc bag, and then you can form it inside there, so that way you don't get your hands all icky. Oh, that's a great so idea, a too. There. And then my favorite big game food. This is something my daddy's been making since we were little. So you just take your favorite barbecue sauce, a little bit of the bourbon whiskey here. So about a quarter cup of this, about half a container of the barbecue, and you take the little Smokies. And the cool thing about these, you can cook them all day if you have a little uh, crock pot kind of a thing. Yeah. Or you can put them out on the table for people to <gasps> eat. And then our cupcakes here. Why, why have, you know, you shouldn't have to do all the work yourself. Head over to Krista's Culinary Creation. She made these for us, these cupcakes and these cookies. So she can make, the, and then the coconut, I just took regular coconut and dyed it with food coloring. But how oh. yummy, right? Oh, that's coconut, that's edible. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was, you know, just the, the stuff you put that, in Easter baskets. <laughs> in there. And then on top of that, though, is it's a little bit toffee. of- toffee. toffee on there. Yes. Stop. Oh my God. So she even teaches classes over there. So if you want to learn how to make this stuff yourself, she can teach you how yeah. to do that too. I love that that's coconut. I, I didn't even, I didn't notice <laughs> until right now. Best oh. snack in the world. Yeah. <laughs> Great ideas. And also coming up, not only do you have to have the cocktails and the food, but the decorations. And Adina's going to show us some really fun little uh, decorations, even some games to play and something fun for the kids as well. And for more information on Adina Anderson, head over to SALive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live. Live tab. <clears throat> All right. Well, it is National Soup Month, and we today's colder temperatures. It's a souper day. <laughs> Very good. I like that one. Our oh, we entertain Tobias. ourselves, you know, <laughs> uh, for a warm bowl of goodness. Our Jen Tobias Trusky is out there at the Culinary Cottage, learning how to make an easy recipe with a little bit of a French twist. Exactly, yes, and it smells so good because we're already sauteing the veggies here. Now, Nicole Flowers is an instructor here at the Culinary Cottage, and you guys have so many different classes, but what are we making today? Today we are doing a roasted tomato soup with a basil pea stew, which is a French version of a pesto, and we'll get to why we do that in a little bit. Okay. Uh, but you are making a soup that can serve uh, up to six people under 10 bucks. Six so people. So it's delicious Lovely. and it's super budget friendly. Okay. You have your onions and your carrots in there that have sauteed till they're nice and soft. Mm -hmm. Now you're gonna add in a tablespoon of tomato paste and some garlic. And that just needs to cook for about a minute until those flavors bloom. Stir that tomato paste to and coat all those And this is the paste veggies. that you just get it right from the tube. Yeah, so we love to tomato know. paste in a tube. 
Um, mm -hmm. You know, you open those cans and you have you need a tablespoon, and then you're like, what do I do with this? So it just right. keeps better in a tube, better flavor too. Good to know. That's a good tip too, because I always use the other one. So yeah. uh, okay, so this goes. These are double concentrate too, so they have much more flavor. Perfect. So once you cook that for about a minute, these are our tomatoes that we slow roasted this morning. We cut them in half, drizzled them with olive oil, mm. salt, pepper, a tiny bit of sugar to balance out the acidity, and we slow roasted them until they started to collapse. Okay. So now they're gonna go into your soup. Yum. And we're gonna add about two cups of stock. And if you don't have homemade, we love to use um, a soup base. So this is a roasted chicken soup base. So Jen, you can just pour in your two cups of water and then mm -hmm. add those, um, the two teaspoons of the soup base. And prep for all of this takes about what? What would you say? Uh, well, while the tomatoes are roasting, because they take about 30 minutes to roast, you can be chopping, getting all your other prep work done. Oh, I don't know, 10 minutes maybe. That's it's not quick. bad at all. Yeah, it's quick. So this will go for what, 30 minutes? That's gonna simmer for 30 minutes okay. until the tomatoes really kind of have broken down even mm. further and all of those flavors have oh, had a chance to meld. So, so we would bring that to a boil and then turn it down and just let it simmer. 20 okay. minutes, you know, and go, or 30 minutes, a little bit longer. And then it looks like this. Once it has cooked, this cooked for just over 30 minutes. It was probably like 35 minutes. And the tomatoes broke down. Everything, all those flavors are beautifully incorporated. So what we do now is we puree it and we're gonna use an immersion blender to do that, which is one of my favorite kitchen tools. Ooh, that looks very fancy. Yeah, yeah okay, so you just you do this. stick this into your uh -huh. pot and turn it on. And again, this is after about 30 minutes. If this is cooked over here, yes. then you kind of use and that blender there. Puree this all up. And so you would just continue to do this until it's completely silky and smooth. If you want a soup that's not as rustic as this, this is a little bit of a chunkier style tomato soup, then you would um, push, uh, put it through a fine mesh sieve. So just run right. that through a Got sieve it. and get all the salt. I like the salt. chunky. I do too. <laughs> So, so then you add the cream? Then you add the cream. This okay. is optional, you can keep this soup dairy free, but this is sort of what gives it that comfort level. So we're gonna slowly drizzle in. I have about three quarter cup here. Okay. And we're just gonna slowly drizzle this in until it reaches our desired consistency. All right, we're And then you finish out. it, okay. you ladle this up, and you drizzle our basil pistou, which is like a French pesto, it's just, doesn't have the nuts or the cheese. Perfect, so she's gonna top that off, but just so you know, this recipe is available on salive.com right now, so you can head over there, and she topped it off with that delicious garnish stew. there, yeah. peas stew, and we have all of the ingredients needed and the entire recipe, which is your recipe, right? Yes, it actually is one of my recipes. So. Wonderful, so when we come back out here, Mike and Fiona, we are gonna learn some of her cutting skills, yep. because she's all about that and prepping the right way, so I'm gonna enjoy some soup. Back to you guys. Yeah. Yes! Oh, it looks delicious. Right? Busted tomato. Mm. So good, all right. For more information on the Culinary Cottage, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Well, we are not done with soups yet because coming up, gonna make one of our favorite soups. It is a cheesy chicken tortilla. Easy to make, and boy, is it good and hearty. And next, hey, this girl's got game. Young athlete Zori whipped Mike and Jen into shape. kids to be really healthy and really motivated in life and this girl is succeeding in both in big ways. Yes, 12 year old, 12 year old Zoriana Collier has started a free sports conditioning program and she's here with us today to give us a taste of that. Good afternoon. Good Welcome. Afternoon. All right, well, might as well get to it. Show us first of all, all right. some of the exercises we're going to be doing here. All right, so the first one we have is push-ups on the ladder. You want to get as low as you can at least 90 degrees. Oh my goodness. Okay. All right, Jen, so ladies gonna... first. All right, I'll put this down. <laughs> okay, while Jen's doing that, why did you start this program? 
Well, I've been training with my dad since I was six years old, and since then I've always been the only girl in the gym. By the age of 14, girls drop out of sports at twice the rate of boys, and it has a lot to do with confidence. It is true. I, you know, I remember playing sports in middle school, and I remember a lot of girls dropping out, so that is true, a true, true statistic, right? Yes. By playing sports, it's brought my confidence up greatly, especially with playing with all boys. And you have another move for us now that we have to try? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so the next one is hopping lunges. You want to go here? Jump as high as you can. Two feet in each square. Two feet in each square. Oh my goodness. I'm going to start on this side. How do you get how do you get girls to participate? If you're like, well, I'm not athletic, I don't want to do this, what, what's your sales pitch to them? I like to inspire other girls, so I work hard to accomplish many things so I can lead as an example for other girls. And you said a lot of girls drop out of any sort of organized sports. Yes, by the age of 14, girls drop out of sports at twice the rate of boys. Why is that, do you think? Um, it does have a lot to do with confidence and peer pressure. If one girl drops out, another girl might feel pressure to drop out too. If you have confidence in yourself, you have no problem with doing what you want to do. All right, I can't believe I'm asking this, but what's next? <laughs> okay, so now you're going to be in a plank position on the mat. Okay. And you're going to extend your arms out and touch the cone. Okay, just like this. Try not to shift your hips and keep your body straight. Good, good. How do you think athletics and building confidence has helped you just in life in general, in schoolwork and everything? It always keeps me motivated to be the best that I can be. And by wanting to be the best that I can be in sports, it makes me want to be the best in everything else. Oh, I love that. Okay. This is, is good stuff. Is there a lay down exercise now? <laughs> How about Next this? Next one, you got another one, right? Yes, ma'am. Oh no, my, get up, get up. <laughs> okay, so the next one, we have Supermans. The most neglected muscle in the body is the lower back. So you're going to be here, you're going to lift your legs and your arms up. All right. Get your chest off the mat, just up and down. And you said the lower back is not a muscle that we really focus on back there, right? Is that right? Yes, that's why this uh, exercise is most beneficial. Woo. Superman, you feel like Superman over there? <laughs> and like any exercise program, Woo. You're not going to be Superman or Superwoman right question. off the bat, right? Nope. But just getting out and doing something is good, right? Yes, sir. Okay, our next one. All right, what's next? Our next one is the same concept, except you're going to be holding it. Oh. Just hold it. Just relax. Superman on a great day. Yes. Okay. Here we All go. Right. Who can hold the longest, Jen? Ready? Oh, yeah. Just breathe. Ready? Ready? Who counts right now? Three, two. Up. Oh. Hold good, it. good. Just breathe, just I can breathe. Be all day, Mike. I can breathe. All day. <laughs> you got it, you got it. So, how often do you work out? Sorry. At least five days a week. Really? For At how least. Long? Hour, two hours, three hours. <laughs> well, it helps to have your awesome dad. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. I guess Mike stopped. <laughs> Great. Well, I thought you were stopping. Anyway, <laughs> hey, how can folks, who's eligible for your program? All girls, you don't have to be an athlete to train like one, so all you have to do is have confidence and to be able to do the things that we do. All right. All right. And how do people get a hold of you? Well, we have a YouTube channel called GGG TV. Girls Got Game? Yes, girls sir. Girls Got Game, all uh, right. Well, if you'd like more information on Girls Got Game, just go to salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live I tab. feel it already. You inspired me, Zori. Thank you so much. Of course. I to rest, but thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. Hey, stick around because Jen is learning the art of the chef's knife and is going to share some helpful tips that you can use in your kitchen. And enter to win $10,000 in new windows for your home. We're going to tell you how. That's next on SA Live. Well, home renovations are trending right now as we're all at home a little more these days. Maybe you're looking to upgrade your bathroom or install new windows, and we know where you can go to do both. Bath Expo and Window Expo, and Director of Marketing Amanda McDaniel joins us today, and she's gonna tell us how you can enter to win $10,000 in new windows. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, thank you for having me. 
new windows. I mean, that's one way to brighten someone's day as well as brighten <laughs> the inside of their home. And before we get to the sweet steaks, we want to know what makes Bath Expo and Window Expo different than any other home improvement companies. That is a great question. Well, first of all, we have been serving Texan families since 2006, and it is our it is a pleasure to be serving Texan families. You won't find us anywhere outside of Texas. We are Texas born and raised. So that's definitely what makes us different. And when we see a home, we don't just see the walls, we see you. We are a company that truly wants to improve your home, transform your life, and love you back. Speaking of transforming your life, you specialize in tub to shower conversions, right? That is correct. Uh, we do. We do a lot of tub to shower conversions. And what that is, is that some people have a shower that has a tub in it. And they're like, I don't want to walk over it. It just takes up space. I never use that tub. Take it out. Just take it out. I turn it into a beautiful walk-in shower for me. Um, and so we do those all day long. We can also take a shower and turn it into a tub if you want something to relax and soak in. Um, but we can install and make that transformation within one day. That can make it a lot easier for some folks, especially the el especially the elderly, you know, when they need, you know, to kind of take that tub out, make it a little easier for them to step in. So what is the difference between a quality window and an inexpensive builder grade window? Most people do not realize all the options with windows until they actually need to replace their windows. There is hollow frames, there's insulated frames, there's security features, there's sound suppression. Um, there are all kinds of color choices and options and people just don't realize, wow, my builder grade window was put in cheap to keep that cost of my home down, but it's not lasting. People need to invest in a good quality window that's going to last them for years to come. Our window was designed specifically for Texas, um, takes all the guesswork out, great investment, and comes with a double lifetime warranty. All right. We mentioned it at the start of this, and I know folks are waiting to hear how they can <laughs> enter to win $10,000 of new windows for their home. Tell them how. Absolutely. Well, we're looking for the most worn out windows in Texas. So go to windowexpo.com and it's right there on our homepage. It says, do you have the most worn out windows? Click here and enter. Um, there's even an option to show us your worn out windows. We would love to see them. You can enter and there is no purchase necessary. You can go in, tell us about those, enter yourself. We're going to draw a winner on March 22nd and we're really excited about it. Amanda McDaniel, thank you so much for that information. All right, for more on Bath Expo and Window Expo, give them a call at 1-800-980-3976 or check out their website at bathexpotx.com and windowexpo.com. Amanda, thank you again for your time and stay safe. You're very welcome, thank you. Hey, Adina is going to be back in just a bit with easy to make big game decor ideas from banners to tabletop football. And next, Jen is learning her kitchen basics. Things might get a little dicey. Ooh. <laughs>Welcome back, everyone. No, it's not a movie. Knives Out. <laughs> Jen Tobias Trusky is learning all of her knife skills over there at Culinary Cottage. Yes, she's going to be getting proper instruction in kitchen cutting techniques. Yes, among other things, because Nicole, the expert out here, has so many tips and tricks for me. One that just blew my mind. <laughs> she has a recommendation for an awesome kitchen tool that she swears by, yeah, and it's called the... The Great Plate. We use these in our classes. We sell them like hotcakes. They're a fabulous tool for prepping garlic, ginger. Um, basically, Jen, you've got this beautifully grated garlic here, mm -hmm. and Beautiful. what we did was peel that garlic and rub it along along the plate back and forth in one oh like, back goodness. and forth motion, and it just Look makes this gorgeous plate. And then it has a gather brush that you mm -hmm. can use when you're all done grading oh, to get that so off good. and put it in whatever it is that you're making. And it's funny because I asked Nicole, I had asked her if, uh, that what's the best way to cut garlic? And she brought out get this out plate, plate and, and yep. you said these sell like hotcakes here. Yep. So really good kitchen tool to have. Now, as yes. far as knife and skills. And the other thing that we are always teaching in our classes here is good knife skills and proper cutting of an onion, which is really helpful. So you can have onion pieces flying all over the place. We always cut the stem end of the onion, never the root, okay? Mm -hmm. So we just cut this off real quickly. Stand that up and you can cut it in half. 
And from here, you can peel it real quickly. And it's okay if you get a little teary eye. <laughs> yeah, actually, this kind of helps not get so teary-eyed. Okay. Okay. So from this point, you're leaving this root intact. It's going to help hold the onion together. You can either just start slicing it, or mm -hmm. if you want more of a rough chop, you would make some, whoops, got some skin on there, some slices along the length of the onion, and then you're just going to start chopping. You make it look so easy. It is. <laughs> And this is what you do. This is what you teach. I mean, this yep. is what you do. Yeah, there are a couple of different tricks to getting these to be smaller, but that is basically a good starting point. Mm -hmm. Another thing we always um, love to teach people is the proper way to cut a carrot. Um, we're going to dice this, and a dice is uh, generally a square cut, and this is a round carrot. So you don't have to peel it. Just get a good scrub, and then you kind of cut the peel off to square your carrot real quickly. Mm -hmm. And then from here, depending on what size you needed, you'll just cut this into some slices, cut those slices up, and you're just going to start Gosh, cutting. never again will I cut carrots the same way. And you will have all the same size pieces of carrots. They will cook evenly. That is um, great. And that's yeah. how you did it for the soup earlier, because yeah. they were all the perfect we size. We cut them a lot smaller, because that was a quick cooking soup, so we cut our strip a little bit smaller. There you go. And then just started cutting from there. All right. Well, those are all we have time for right now. But again, you can come out here. Go to Culinary Cottage's website, which we have on salive.com and she has so many different classes. I saw there's a kid's Harry Potter class or yeah. something coming so up fun. so fun different themes and you can do couples you can do a girls night you can do kids so many options and you learn from the expert nicole herself so thank you so much Thanks, nicole Jen. sa live.com click the as seen on sa live tab for more on her classes i guess i gotta get chopping back to you guys <laughs> you know that's the thing you're gonna have the, the best tools in the world but when you learn those little techniques from the experts it's so simple. Yes, and can save you time. <laughs> oh, yeah. And again, for more information on the Culinary Cottage, head over to SALive.com. Click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. All right, still ahead. It is one of our favorite soups, this cheesy chicken tortilla soup. It is very inexpensive, very filling, and pretty easy to make. And Adina is back to show us fun ideas for decorating your table for the upcoming big football game. Well, with the big game coming up, if you want home field advantage, boy, then you better be super prepared. <laughs> and Adina Anderson, of course, is back. Okay, she's with Creative Lifestyles at Adina, with, with Adina, and you're here to show us, of course, some decor you can do for the big game. Yeah, simple, easy, inexpensive. Most of the stuff you probably already have in your home. Mm -hmm. At least I always do. <laughs> <laughs> If you're Adina, Adina you're all, I keep the rest of us. Yes, you have all I'm sorts. Not, oh, such a hoarder. Um, okay, so the first thing Fiona has over here, now this I did purchase, was this fun turf paper. It kind of feels like turf grass. Yes, oh, wow. it gonna does. I'm some in a minute too. And these are just the mason ball, the jar lids that you get on those mason jars. Mm -hmm. I, I always have those left over because I never use them. And so you just made some coasters here. Now be careful because they'll be a little hot. Yep, yep, yep. But just hot glue that right on to the, there. And then you have a coaster for your cocktails we made earlier. <laughs> I love that. Simple, right? Easy, easy, easy right? Craft. Yes. And then the next one we have is a popcorn bag. And while you're painting those, Fiona, you got one under there somewhere hidden yep, that's I not do. painted. I do. And you're going to go ahead and you're just going to paint a football on there. Mike, you're going to start putting together one of our games. Okay, is this for like model railroads and stuff? Yeah, you know, I don't. I got it at Hobby Lobby. It came in yeah. a really big roll. I needed like a sheet of it. So now my son took it over for his gaming. So <laughs> okay. he's going to use right. it. So and that's just a clay pot. And I sponged the paint on it so it looks a little more like turf than just painted. Mm -hmm. And then I cut a piece of the turf right there. And make sure you put a, a styrofoam ball inside there. To, that's going to hold your goalpost that you're going to make. Okay. And so then. You just place that on. And then you just stick your goalpost. And that's popsicle just popsicle sticks. sticks that I painted with the Deco Art acrylic paint. And I did about two coats of that on there. And you have some there if you want to build another goal post. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I know, right? This is kind of a cute little. You could even turn these into place settings if you have, you know, maybe a couple people in your house or something and you, you want to make a, a food kind of thing. Yeah. But this is just a fun game to make. And it's kind of fun to build. And the kids could totally get into this one. Let them paint it and build it. Look at your football over there. Good job. And, and as you always say, <laughs> don't forget the Band-Aids when you're yes. using the hot glue. Always because put a Band-Aid on your finger when you're going to hot glue. And then just fill those bags up with popcorn. And then everybody has their own individual snack. 
so you're not digging into the popcorn ball with all the fingers and the double dipping and all, all right. that. These, so this, you know, like yes. Pringles cans or... Uh, I'm into veggie, veggie chips. Veggie but. chips, okay. <laughs> So I put about four coats of paint, two, well, about two or three coats of paint uh -huh. on there, and then I measured it out and cut it, and I'm not like tape measure girl, I just kind of put it on there, and then you just piece it together to make goalposts. Look how simple that is, <laughs> right? <laughs> Oh, this, look this at that! This one's going to stay in the Hall of Fame. This will have to go in the craft room. I love this craft. <laughs> <laughs> but how simple is that? And that's a cute little table place setting that you can have. Oh, yeah. And then, um, you know, have all your food out like the, what we had earlier just to kind of decorate. And then the next thing, Mike, is the game. Oh, okay. Here this we go. This is such a fun game. So it's more popsicle sticks, and I've got some already painted for you right there in front of you. And you just take a rubber band and put a rubber band around, two, around the end of two of them. Mm hmm Oh boy. I know, right? This is <laughs> Oh, the flying teddy bears. Here we go. I love, you can use the goldfish or the teddy bears or whatever. Use the popcorn for you know, whatever you have. <laughs> and then you're going to take two more. And there's no hot glue needed for this one, but you're going to take two more popsicle okay. sticks and put them between your two that you just tied together. Just so like you kind of give it a little bit of lift and put it all the way down to the bottom. Okay. Okay, I got my goalpost in front of me, Mike. You ready? Go for it. Oh my and gosh. then you put the, the and little. Then you have a. This is just a pop bottle top yeah. or a water top. And I'm going for. Oops. Ready? Oh, he didn't go very far. You can do this. For more lift, oh, put it down. Oh, for almost. Lift. Almost. Oh, and the greatest thing ah. is, I got it. Yes, yeah, you, you did. did. Right. You did. Three points. Very nice. Very nice. And of course, if you do, if you make these, you can reuse them every year, right? You could. And and for the tablecloth, I just got this material over. I think at Hobby Lobby or one of those. And you can order that online and they'll ship it to you or you could do curbside or just go in and get some. It's really inexpensive. Place right. cards on these things too if you wanted to. You could get really uh, fancy uh, with them also. <laughs> Fantastic <laughs> ideas, lots of fun. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Adina, thank for more information you. on Adina Anderson and Creative Lifestyles with Adina. Just head to our website, salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. All right, next on the show, National Soup Month continues. It is uh, one of our favorite soups. It is yummy. It is cheesy chicken tortilla soup, easy to make. And there's our audience. Well, I tell you, they are always smiling. That's great. They are so excited because, you know, my favorite chef is about to make his favorite soup. It is National <laughs> Soup Month, and this is a recipe. I don't know where it uh, originally came from, but we got it from uh, my mother-in-law, and it's cheesy chicken tortilla soup. And I took the, the onions and garlic, kind of sauteed it just a little bit in the pot. And everything over on the table next to Fiona, those were the items. That was about $23 for all of that, also including the onion and the uh, the green pepper. Now, as far as the chicken is concerned, I did buy the, uh, the pre, you know, torn up chicken right there. Or you can get one of those uh, roasted chickens at H-E-B. You get a little bit more meat, about the same price. And then the other items that go in it right here on the table, I figured those were pantry items. So those would be, you know, the salt, pepper, sugar, um, chili powder that you might just have in, in your pantry. So very inexpensive dish to make. And it's a, a multi-step process. So you put a couple things in, obviously we don't have as much time here on the air, but, and then um, you, 10 more items and then let it simmer for about 10 minutes and you do this. So overall it takes about say 45 minutes to cook. So just add all the corn in there. It's corn, black beans. Make sure you rinse your black beans uh, so you don't have just a, a completely black colored soup. There's a lot of syrupy type stuff yeah, on there. Yeah, you want it to look yeah, like colorful. Kind of cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey! <laughs> um, also, so uh, yellow corn, white corn, and uh, there's rotel in there. There's tomato puree in there. It's kind of hard to find sometimes at the grocery store. You really got to kind of hunt for that one. And you just put all these ingredients in there. And one of the final steps then, and once this simmers again for about 10 minutes, uh, you would put in all of the, uh, some water and flour, and then that will help to thicken it up somewhat. Then the final step, and we're not going to do this here just because I'm going to try and boil that and have soup at home, but you would add the cream, some sour cream, as well as the um, Velveeta, and that's what makes it soup. And this is then what it looks like. And the nice thing is I made this um, a couple weeks ago and froze what we didn't use. We'll usually have between my wife and I um, a bowl because you don't want a second bowl because it's really filling soup. 
and we'll have one then a couple of nights later, another bowl of soup. And then I froze this and that made two more nice big bowls of soup. And you can put some tortillas down in there. Ooh. Try that or put some on top. The other thing I was thinking of is if you wanted to try something a little bit different, maybe some of that uh, smoked sausage, you know, the, the link smoked sausage yes, you can get. And throw, mm -hmm. You know, just brown that up and then put this on here. But it is a good, hearty, warm, you know, kind of cold day soup. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, that is so good. And, oh, nice and, and the creamy. The longer mm -hmm. it sits, like, the day later or the next day. Oh, and it absorbs, all those yes. really mm -hmm. come together. Crush up some tortilla chips. I like just a nice warm, crusty bread mm -hmm. with it. I love that with soup. So, yeah, it's very easy. It's a nice and sourdough. The, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the recipe is on our uh, website. Just go to salive.com and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Very nice. Very, very, very tasty. Okay. All right. For more information, of course, as Mike mm. said, on Mike's cheesy <laughs> chicken tortilla soup, you know what to do. As he said, head to our website. All right. Tomorrow on the show, we're becoming ninjas and racing with robots. We're trying out a fun program that could get your kids more excited about science and technology than ever before. Plus, elevate your home with tips and tricks that won't break your budget. We chat with a decorating expert who's transformed her 450 square foot apartment into a chic space saving home. That and much more at one on SA Live. Have we got deals for you? Welcome to ksatdeals.com. Now I have another deal for you that your dentist will thank you for, a portable water flosser. This item is perfect for the entire family and it works for implants, braces, crowns, and bridges too. It's a cordless water flosser teeth cleaner by Dr. Bay. Sounds like a mouthful, but this award-winning flosser really supports great oral health. We'll actually give it a little try here. Ooh, that is a lot of pressure there so you know it's getting the job done. Now it has a 360 degree rotating nozzle, cleans every corner of your mouth and in between your teeth, three adjustable water pressures. Choose the best mode for your teeth. It also comes with a flosser, nozzle, and USB cable and travel bag. Helps also to fight gum disease and you'll have that great smile. Now the retail price is $59. The case at deals price, $46.95. That's a 21% discount. Now you can find this deal and many more at caseatdeals.com. Welcome back, everyone. Okay, what is your, you know, little bit of luck that you yes. have? To bring your team. Lisa He's Ann says, my dad believes in not watching because he thinks it gives them bad luck. I know it's a few <laughs> people like that. I can't look, I can't look. Adam says, I cheer for the other team. My wife can vouch for that. My team loses when I cheer for them. <laughs> Another one. That's <laughs> kind of along the same lines, that's, right? That's, that's kind of sad. So. <laughs> All right, don't forget tomorrow, we are becoming ninjas. Are we? That's, I, that's <laughs> what it says here in black and white, that we're becoming ninjas with uh, we're trying out a new fun program. Could get your children more excited. I was ninja out of technology the technology than ever before. <laughs> and elevate your home kitchen, something chic. Soup recipes online. Yes.